the part of the reason why we decided to do this is because we see a lot of new antioxidants. And I we when we first started working on this episode, I was like, oh, maybe I'll just be more product focused since we briefly talked about antioxidants before. But then the more I looked into, the more I'm like, new launches are all vitamin C and I want to do another <laughs> vitamin C episode. <laughs> but it's because, you know, there is data in the vitamin C world. Yes. So, even the derivatives, which is cool. Yeah. So I, I do think most of the new launches with vitamin C are on the derivatives. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's kind of an interesting marketplace right now. For sure. Um, but it's still pretty wild. Um, I have decided to give two products the punt award. Um, <laughs> it is exactly as it so- sounds. If I was, if I have the products, I would probably just punt it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So candidate number one, Sephora's version of vitamin C E. <sighs> it's a, it's called Super Serum Ultra Glow Serum, mm-hmm. and it has a, it has the artwork has C and E on it. So basically, it's positioned as a direct challenger to any other CEs on the market. Um, but again, I looked at the ingredients and I looked at it some more. <laughs> and I looked at it again. And I'm like, well, where's my ascorbic acid or ascorbic anything? And it's, it's not great. Uh, so you get a lot of extracts, a lot of citrus extracts like lemon. Um, there's also sugar maple extract. Yum. Um, it's, there's panthenol and sunflower seed oil. Um, and then right at the very bottom, you will find a sorbyl glucoside. Right next to your vitamin tocopherol. Yeah. To sum up, no matter what form of vitamin C you use, the effective level is typically You're gonna actually need more. always at above 1%. Yeah. Having it at the end, it's, uh, it's guaranteed it's under 1%. So... I was going to say, it also doesn't bode well when your packaging is completely clear. Yeah. Um, Generally, like we said, most antioxidants are pretty fussy. And so it just, yeah, it's not great. It's cheap. It's 20 bucks. But I will still pump that 20 bucks (laughs) into the trash can. And to be fair, there are dupes of vitamin C of CE for Rulic that are that same price point. So it's pretty brutal. I would say that's that's a rough one. It's not very hard to save. All right. It's usually on this podcast. Podcast, we take a more gentle approach to products. Like, you know, we poke fun on stuff. We try to find silver linings. We highlight some of the good work people have done. But that one is like a full punt. <laughs> I think also because the vitamin C space is so crowded. Mm-hmm. And now you have like affordable dupes coming out that kind of the blueprint is there. So to come out with a product that really doesn't it's not a dupe it doesn't really push the boundaries in any way it's not really that much more affordable then it's like uh help anybody (laughs) help (laughs) help us help you all right okay and candidate number two the body shop has a vitamin c glow boosting moisturizer all right hit me Here's the thing, and I share this feeling between these two, both of these products, mm-hmm. which is if you just call it a moisturizer or mm-hmm. a hydrating serum, mm-hmm. I wouldn't be that offended. Okay. Even if you put vitamin C in a much smaller print, like vitamin C infused moisture, whatever, uh-huh. not that offended. But these are like bold, big letters that say, this is a vitamin C product. But if you look at this ingredient list, you have, okay, you have water. Uh, solvent. Oh, and they kindly label all the ingredients. Mm-hmm. As, yeah, you know you have glycerin, propane diol, yada yada thickener. Oh, I see fragrance. Uh, da, 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 then da, you get all da, the way da, da, down, da, da, da. and you say, and you see THD asorbate chilling at the bottom of the barrel, next to disodium EDTA, which you will not use above 0.1% in this type of formulas. <laughs> maybe 0.5. Yeah. yeah. So with that, and again, like we said, another reminder that um, THC sorbate's oil-based. Um, you definitely need a lot more than 1%. Um, and again, this category, I feel like now consumers are probably the most aware of. And mm-hmm. I feel like there is a need to do better. Yeah, there's no excuse here. So we would see this more as a very, very light moisturizer. Mm-hmm. And that's it. Yeah, yeah, it's a very basic moisturizer. Again, if you just call it orange moisturizer i would not be offended (laughs) but it's just not again guys if you guys use it use these products i love the texture it works well for you as a hydrator and whatnot 
that's all fine. Just know that if you are looking for something to seriously act as a long-term antioxidant help, these aren't it. Okay. So we're going to turn the flame off and now talk about products that actually are decent. <laughs> yeah, we see two new launches um, that have that's also in the vitamin C derivative space. Mm-hmm. First off, we have Herbivores Nova. I have to say, I'm so proud of Gloria for not flaming this brand. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying. I'm she trying. is growing. <laughs> I'm trying. I want to be good, guys. But no, we should really say it's like, as much as we have definitely probably called out herbivore a couple times yeah. in our lives. Um, but great to see. We are very fair in that it's, again, every brand, it's truly product-based. When you ask us, is a brand good or not, it always comes down to products. So, yes. yep, here we go. Take it away. New launch. Yeah, and this one has 15% THD ascorbate. The significant amount. And you will see it as a second place on the ingredient list and that's a good sign. Mm-hmm. I am very lukewarm about the bright neon yellow color, <laughs> but that be what it be. <laughs> it's herbivore. It's got to be bright. I am a little bit concerned about the fact that it is in a clear packaging. Yeah. THC ascorbate is a much more stable vitamin C, but I wouldn't call it an ultra vitamin stable vitamin C as they call it. It still has um its quirks. It, yeah, it still has its quirks and it's not fully stable. So I would definitely it's in clear bottle. If you want to try it, make sure you store it in a dark and cool place. Yeah. Um that's it. There's not that much else to say about it. You can't find other THD ascorbate products. Um, I would say I think for the price and the percentage, it's a good balance. So it's not a bad product to start out at all to try out this ingredient. For sure. All right. Next, we have Tula's Bright Star Vitamin C Antioxidant Brightening Moisturizer. Mm-hmm. So pick the serum and the moisturizer to counteract the two punt award in- <laughs> nominees. <laughs> um, this one has a consumer perception study attached to mm-hmm. it. It doesn't give percentages, but I'm not as offended. So this is an example where like, okay, if we don't want to talk about percentages, at least not have it buried at the bottom of the list. Like a, like people don't know what that means anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, so this one has uh, 3-O-ethyl ascorbic acid in the third spot and THD ascorbate in the fourth spot. We don't know how much that is, but in the third and fourth spot, there's a solid chance that it is well above 1%. Yeah. So, uh, and 3-O ethyl ascorbic acid, we ran it last time, that it shouldn't, it doesn't need to be at the 10-15% level anyway. Yeah. So we see that as a good sign, and because it's more positioned as a moisturizer, it has other great supporting ingredients like transamic acid, ferulic acid, and lactobacillus ferment. So we really th- see it as a pretty gentle um, moisturizer that's well balanced has some good actives yeah and i would say this you'll probably start seeing not just like pure vitamin c serums you'll probably start seeing cocktails um in these formulas now sorry (laughs) i think i'm just gonna finish it (laughs) sorry guys Okay, so yeah, um, so I think one of the things that we're predicting is going to happen this summer is that now that we're starting to expand out of the vitamin C serum category, Mm -hmm. you're going to start seeing a lot of these like almost brightening cocktails that are happening. Mm -hmm. Um, And it sort of feels like a hodgepodge. And um, so with this, this is great. Um, Definitely worth a try. I think it just leads us down another product we want to talk about, which is Dr. Dennis Gross. Um, They came out with, they have a product that's called the Ferulic Plus Retinol Triple Correction Eye Serum. And you'll see that based on the ingredient list, you're not really sure what they're getting at, but they're trying to do something. Yeah, so Dr. Dennis Gross is a product, a brand that we talk about once in a while because they use a lot of, great ingredients yes they really do um but all their formulas is like they're putting these ingredients it's literally like you're not really sure what the theme is you know it's like it's like you are trying to make a bouquet yeah you're just not really sure what the angle is it romantic is it you know i put a rose in it i put a lily in it and then i put a daisy in it (laughs) yeah so uh, it's trying to do something. We're yes. just not really sure what. Yes. So for this particular product, this one is a new, I should add, um, but it has 
centella, which is great, um, licorice root extract, ferulic acid, retinol, the um, the derivative form of azelaic acid, uva ursi, which is a natural, um, it's an extract that contains arbutin. They also have arbutin, arbutin. itself. <laughs> they have Morris elba leaf extract, which is mulberry uh, extract, which actually does have clinical data around. Willow bark, quercetin, caffeine, CoQ10, salicylic acid, glycolic acid, mandelic acid, panthenol. So again, we're just, <laughs> they even have peptides. So we're kind of like, who are you? What yeah. do you want to be? <laughs> Tell me. So Dr. Dennis Growth literally takes approach of, my mom tells me I can be whatever I want to be when I grow up. <laughs> so they put everything in, but there are certain things about it. So, for example, like retinol, it's an ingredient that's fussy and things should be formulated around it, but it's not. There's a lot of extracts. So I would say that it's like a very impressive list, but there's, for example, oh, there's so many examples to give here. Uh, in the AHA realm, they have glycolic and mandelic, but it's guaranteed that there isn't enough in here to exfoliate mm. per se mm. so again what does this do and what's the star and what's the goal so i we talk about shock um our shark we talk about cocktails of actives all the time and mm -hmm. how that can be beneficial than just like singular actives yes um, sometimes these cocktails can have synergistic effects where one plus one doesn't equal two, it equals like three or 3, four. Three thousand. Yeah. But the problem is those cocktails need to be substantiated. You can't just assume that by combining all of these, it's going to be so much better. So, you know, again, like if you're feeling lost and you're feeling overwhelmed with all these actives, look for testing. Ginseuticals is a great example yeah. of testing that can give you a ballpark of what might be, you know, relevant results that you'll see um so yeah anyways it can get confusing and the dr dennis gross for me at least with cocktails of actions like it doesn't make sense a little much yeah and, yeah um and the last category of new launches of antioxidants ooh, 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 ooh. is sunscreens um and i think this is a continuation of a trend from last summer ooh. where you see products like the strivectin super c yeah. super goop is big in this but you start you're starting to see a lot of sunscreens claim vitamin c mm -hmm. but we're gonna end that there i'm not gonna go into <laughs> it because that's the meat for the next episode yeah <laughs> <laughs>